Hello, welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Wednesday, September 27th. We are back. We are going to be breaking it down. We're going to start with yesterday's perfect lineups and the winning lineups on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Then we will go into today's slate with projected ownership for pitchers and some pitchers to consider, followed lastly by the stacks. So, we are going to get into it now. Before we do, come join us at Line Star. It's only $39.99 per month. Gets you access to everything we do. All the props, all the DFS, all the goodness. Come get involved. Be in chat. Hang out. It is a good time. Now, projections time. We'll get over to the perfect lineup. And yesterday's perfect lineup uh, on the DraftKings slate, it had Colorado game on the FanDuel. It did not. Uh, but the perfect lineup, Bailey Ober, Lugo, two-man Arizona stack, and then some one-offs there. And the winning lineup went to Ran Ran, one two one one who ran well and 150K. They had the Lugo Ober combo, four man Dodgers, four man Arizona stack. Congrats to them. Way to go. Now let's check out some FanDuel action. All right. So on FanDuel, it went to Lugo. Then their two man uh, Diamondbacks, two man Twins stack didn't use very close to the full salary for that perfect lineup. The winning lineup, however, went to Gosman, four-man Arizona, four-man Twins. So, big-time correlation day, and the MLB got it done. Now, let's check out the lineups for today, or the slate for today. So, one thing needs to be said, there is nine games on DraftKings. There is eight games on FanDuel. I'm guessing FanDuel does not have a doubleheader in the Mets. Let's just make sure that's what it is here. As I click all over it. Uh, yeah, so FanDuel is not carrying the Mets second game. All right. Ownership-wise, we got Pablo Lopez coming at 42.3% owned. And he probably should be. It is versus those Oakland A's who just aren't very good. He is very, very pricey, but he's still a 2x value on Lion Star. So I think he looks well. He's been in good form recently. No reason that Oakland should get to him here. They do hit the ball hard, so they could give up. You know, he could give up a home run or something. But outside of that, I would not be too scared. The, the A's strike out a lot. And we got a 28% combined K rate. Uh, Zach Thompson is coming in next. 5.9K. Line star doesn't like it. I don't really like it either. So we're just going to keep it on moving. Jose Barrios is next versus the Yankees. I actually do like this spot for Barrios. Line star does as well at 2.1X. Uh, and I think he should probably be the second highest projected pitcher on this slate. Now, the Yankees have got to him in the past. If we look at his uh, performance versus them, it really hasn't been that great. The one thing I will say is that he has been a much better pitcher this year than last year. And he is still working deep in the games versus them. The only question is... One, is Judge going to be in the lineup today? He was out uh, yesterday. If he is out again, that lineup just looks bad without him. So do not mind some Barrios. Sean Manea is next, 1.2x. The issue with Manea is you really don't know how much he's going to pitch. Last three games, he has been up upwards of 80 pitches. So that is nice. Maybe there is a little consistency here. But when he is on, he does have some real nice strikeout stuff. He just hasn't been on for a little while here. Uh, but at 6K, you know, I don't mind it. I don't love it. He is at least a lot better at home. And 
Joey Estes. Yeah, I have a real problem going there. I think this Minnesota uh, offense versus righties is pretty good. And Estes hasn't showed us much yet. Dane Dunning, I am actually a little interested in here. Uh, I have been lucky enough to call a couple real good games for him. Lionstar does him have, have him at a 2x value. When he puts it together, he is actually a pretty dominant pitcher. I mean, he has some real high highs, and all of them are against offenses that aren't very good. The Angels are an offense that's not very good. So I think Dunning is slightly interesting here. Uh, Valdez, look, this guy can put up a huge game against anybody. I don't mind him. I do like that he is very low owned. So that's why he he's in consideration. It's more his ownership than the matchup itself. Uh, Garrett Cole's way too expensive in my am mind but uh he is always worth bringing up just because he is such a good pitcher he has he went off against toronto last game but outside of that he has struggled versus them a little bit in the past now let's get over to the fan duel action here so we got pablo lopez at 36 percent zach thompson at 34 i do not get that ownership going to Thompson whatsoever. Uh, Griffin Canning, we didn't talk about him on DraftKings. He does have some nice games when he puts it together and he's been pitching well recently. It is just a very good Rangers offense and I don't love the matchup for him. Uh, Garrett Cole's much cheaper on uh, FanDuel, so a little bit more consideration going there. And I think Jose Barrios needs some consideration too at only 2% owned versus a team. If uh, our boy Judge isn't in there, it is less than uh, spectacular there. All right, now let's get over to the action with some stacks. We are breezing through this slate today. Making quick work of the slate. It is kind of an interesting one. The one thing I will say is it's mainly pitching weather across the entire slate outside of the Dodgers and Colorado. So with that, maybe there is a little more interest in that game than usual. We do know it's going to be high owned um, since it's in Colorado. Dodgers, super high owned, 124%. You can always get a little different with the Dodgers stack because they do have a lot of other ancillary pieces in the back of the lineup you can plug and play. So you could get that down a little bit, and I do like the Dodgers a fair bit today. I'm just not going to play the super high owned Dodgers stack. I will be trying to get a little different with it. And, uh, you know, go with one of these that have a little bit more of back-end lineup guys. But, obviously, makes a lot of sense to go to the Dodgers. Noah Davis is in good. Game total is way higher. So, uh, that's that. Also, all the projections are showing they are the best stack today. Uh, there are some ones that can get a little different. Like 90% owned, still very similar projection. I think that is interesting. Um, and that's really what I'd be trying to do today if I am playing the Dodger stack. Use these ones that are just a little bit lower owned, but still project fairly well. Uh, Braves are obviously in a good spot. You can absolutely always go to the Braves. The only issue I see with going them is that it's not, you know, great hitting weather. And the stacks are more expensive than the Dodgers. So you're going to need to see the Braves at these price points, you know, put up 12 plus runs, mm -hmm. have a slew of home runs, steal bases, kind of do all of that to put it together. And I'm just not sure they will as, you know, they're locked locked in their, in their spot and they don't really have to win the games. So they may not do those extra things. Uh, Dodgers obviously are interesting. Those seem to be the two stacks everybody's going for. 
And value-wise, we got the Twins versus Joey Estes. Makes a lot of sense with his 13.66 FIP. <laughs> That's uh, not something you like to see if you are a fan of the A's. So the Twins do make a lot of sense. Angels make a little sense. They did hit well yesterday. Dane Dunning can get blown up. However, I do like Dunning. I think there's a spot you could play either side of that game. Obviously not in the same lineups though. Oakland versus Pablo Lopez is your uh, leverage stack of the day. Likely won't work, but when it does, you know, you're winning GPPs. It's very low owned. I don't love it today, but it is an option. And your ceiling stack of the day is going to be all over the Dodgers and the Braves. And we got the Padres sneaking in there as well versus Sean Manaya. Manaya does give up some really hard content contact. So if the Padres are hitting well, they can definitely lit up Manaya, who likes to give up the home run. Uh, Houston, I think, is a really interesting stack today. They are going unowned. And Bryce Miller gives up some real hard contact to lefties. So Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, I think, are very interesting today. So, you know, a smaller stack or, you know, you can go the full five if you think they can really get to Miller. But I think some uh, Astros are very interesting today at very, very low ownership. And then let's check uh, the teams here just to see if we are missing anything. We are, and that is Colorado. Colorado is the second highest uh, implied run total, but yet not showing up on the highest owned. They are very interesting. Emmett Shaheen can get beat up. He also probably doesn't go too deep into the game. And the middle relief Dodger bullpen is not that great. So I definitely like Colorado. Uh, Texas in play, Canning can get lit up he gives a very hard high hard contact rate high average exit velocity and the bullpen's not very good so if they can get to canning they could really blow up the slate milwaukee is a little interesting as well and we talked about the padres and that will do it for us today a real quick wrap up of the day and there is a chance this could be the last breakdown of the MLB season. I will try to do one Friday. Friday does get pretty crazy though with all the NFL stuff we're trying to put out. Um, I'll try my best to get one out for you, but I can't promise it, you that. If I do not, I want to say thank you guys for joining me. It was a fun season. I enjoyed doing these and I'll be back next season for you. And obviously I'm going to keep doing the NFL uh, breakdowns as well. All right, guys, have a good one. Good seeing you all. Good luck tonight. Let's get them. Let's cash those tickets.